Welcome everybody to this masterclass of the month, which is all about your body being the barometer for your soul. And we're going to be talking this evening massively about why your body, let me just remove my pin for a second, uh, why your body shows many different symptoms, and especially at this time. We're also going to be talking about what is ascension and, and why our bodies are showing these messages, but also many different reasons for why your body shows up with symptoms. And we're going to be talking about the soul's communication with the body, uh, which is one of my favorite uh, subjects. So as you are just saying hi in the chat and just introduce yourself, thanks Teresa for that, <laughs> being the first person. Um, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about me because um, many of you I haven't met before. So welcome everybody, whether I know you and I've known you for a long time or whether I'm just meeting you for the first time. So I'm known as a spiritual scientist. The reason why that is, is because my background is very scientific. So I started off as a psychologist and a psychotherapist and went on to be a neuropsychologist, which is somebody who works with the metaphysical causes of dis-ease. I'm also a naturopath and many other um, modalities I, I have in my little toolbox. But the main thing is, is that I combine all of that science with the fact that I am a channel for spirit. So I work with my guides I am a medium, but I'm also a channel. So I work with galactic guides, ascended masters, um, anyone that wants to work with me uh, comes in and quite often they will come in and bring uh, spoken channeling. So that may happen this evening, uh, depending on, on who comes through and who wants to do the work with us. Uh, sometimes it's through light language, sometimes it's through toning, and um, sometimes we do other work such as inner child healing and we're going to do a combination of all of those things this evening because I feel very strongly that uh, when we do these workshops it's really important not just to talk about it but to actually do the deep healing that goes with it and this gives you an example of how I work in my day-to-day -day life uh, with my community, my beautiful soul family, which is my membership. And uh, you'll see many of them on here as well this evening. And this is the kind of work that we do on an ongoing basis. And so we get to work with each other many times each month and have opportunities to do private sessions with me as well. So I'm just going to, um, I'm looking at everybody all over the world here. So beautiful to see you all. How amazing. Um, I'm just gonna create a sacred space. So uh, what I always do with my work, and I think it's really important that we always do this, is that we create a sacred space. So what we're doing is we're setting an intention so that we are creating a, a healing space for everybody. So we're not only doing it with, um, you know, everyone here on this live, but we're actually doing it from a perspective of everybody who happens to listen afterwards. OK, so I'm going to come into my heart and close my eyes for a moment and create this sacred space with you. We're then going to go into a brief meditation, which will be guided. And I'd like you to um, join in if you would like to and close your eyes if you would like to, whatever makes you feel safe. And uh, then we're gonna get into the subject. And then at the end, um, there's going to be an opportunity for you to ask questions. So we will spend some time and I'll be answering your questions about the symptoms that you have in your body or anything to do with ascension. So we'll do the workshop first, we'll be together in the masterclass and then you've got time to ask me a question. So there'll be a time where I'll say, put a cue in um, the chat if you would like to ask me a question. So don't put what the question is, just put a cue, okay? And, and then I'll bring you on or I'll ask you, if you don't wanna come on, you can then type the question. All right, does that sound okay to you? All right, fantastic. Okay, so let's create the beautiful space.
creator all that is. It is commanded that you pull, clear, cancel and delete on all four levels. I resolve on the history level for everyone here present and to anyone listening after. To release any waywards, any watchers, any entities, any attachments, any thought forms, anything that does not serve us and anything that stops us from being in this present moment and being a clear receiving channel of light. To release it to pure unconditional love. And so it is. Okay, good. Well, let's join together with our hands on our heart if they're not already there. And I want you to breathe into your heart. So we're just going to ground and connect. And so I want you to breathe in and if it feels comfortable for you, just breathe in through your nose and hold for as long as you can and then breathe out. And we're gonna do that three times. So just do it in your own time, in your own space, breathe in, hold and then release okay and then we'll take it to the next level good and let's return our breath to a normalized breath so just breathing in and breathing out And I want you to imagine a beautiful light in your heart. So if you are not used to visualizing and you don't know how to see things, just imagine a ball of light and let's imagine some sparkling energy with it. And just see that in your heart. And every time you breathe, imagine that light getting bigger and brighter and stronger. And now imagine it filling up every single cell of your body And just for now, we're going to imagine all of ourselves with a beautiful smiley face. So all of your your cells are smiling and being lit up by happy energy. And let's fill the whole of our body with that beautiful, smiling, happy energy. Even if your body is not feeling like, like, like that today, Let's bring that perception of happiness into all of your cells. Good. And imagine filling up the whole of your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes and your fingers. And then we're going to imagine, remember to breathe, imagine a beautiful star underneath your feet So imagine you could see your feet in your mind and then a star was underneath your feet, but in the middle of the earth. And we're just going to imagine that this earth today is a beautiful golden earth. This is the new earth that we're all creating. You might like to imagine what color your earth star is. You might see it as a crystal or you might see it as a solid color. Good. And let's draw our attention up to our heart and up to the crown of your head. And just above your crown, imagine that if you could see into the sky, into the universe, you could see a beautiful star, which is your soul star. And this star connects you to all of the wisdom of all of the universe and the multiverse. And I want you to bring a light from that star. Imagine a beautiful, I kind of get it like a rainbow light, the light of ascension actually. Bring that light all the way down through the crown of your head and you may, you may start to feel a tingling, you may not, but just bring that all the way through the crown of your head all the way around the outside of you and down to the ground. So we're just going to expand that light out and imagine it being expanded out into the room that you're sitting in. Fantastic. Good. 
So now we're going to invite in our guides and angels. So even if you don't work with them, even if you don't know about your guides and angels, we're just going to invite them to step into our field and be present with us this evening. Okay. Just get a sense that you know that you're not on your own. Okay, fantastic. So I want you to set your intention. Set your intention for this evening of what you would like to experience. Maybe there's something that you know you would like to heal. Okay. So I'm going to set the intention that you all go away feeling more confident about your body, more confident about your healing ability, and more confident that you understand why your body shows these messages. Okay, fantastic. So come back when you're ready. Whew, it's so hot here in the UK. Um, and uh, we're not used to it, are we, Roshni? We're not used to this heat. We're, we're not like you guys where you have air conditioning units, things like that. We just have the occasional fan if we're lucky. <laughs> so I've got my window open and I live right by the sea. So you may hear some beautiful seagulls uh, coming by just uh, to let you know that we live right on the ocean here. So if you do hear that, then um, that's a blessing. <laughs> so you're here because there's a part of you that wants to understand a bit more about why your body is showing the messages that it's showing. And what we're going through at this time is an incredible time of expansion. Last week, just for myself, I spent the whole week having to clear my diary. Now, that is very unusual for me. And Wendy, who is my beautiful assistant up there, Wendy Navarro, uh, will tell you that it's very, very unusual for me to ever wipe my diary and take time for me. So I actually, the last time I did that was probably a year and a half ago or even maybe longer. And it told me, in fact, the guides told me, but it told me that we were heading for a really, really big second awakening. So we had a beautiful awakening around about 2020 at the end of uh, 2019. And we started to realize that many people were awakening to remember who they are. Well, we are just about to go through uh, another awakening, but I believe that this awakening is very much about us remembering that we can heal ourselves. And you may have noticed that um, lots of systems are breaking down when we think about the uh, medical model. And I'm just going to do a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor and I don't claim to heal or cure. And in fact, I believe that no one heals anyone. I believe that we are all our own inner healers. And the reason why I believe that is because I know that we are a soul having a human experience. And I know that our soul is speaking to us via our physical body at all times. And it's our job to actually listen to what our soul is trying to talk to us about. And so we are going to be doing some work in that in a moment. But so we are just about to go through another massive expansion. And I do believe that, and I'm sure you have noticed this, there are a lot of people um, choosing to leave this planet at this time. There are many souls that have made contracts to leave at this time and really help us from the other side, you know, not that there is another side, but from another realm, from the soul realm, from the spirit realm. And so they've chosen to experience that 
Whereas we've chosen to stay here and experience incredible ascension on this planet. Who would agree with me that we are going through such an incredible transformation? Put your um, hand, your golden hand up if you agree with me. Yeah, Lansing agrees or any reaction will be fine. Yeah, many of you. Yeah, many of you. Yeah, and I really, really believe that um, we, we, we've we got this. You know, something that um, feels sometimes that we are stepping into this 3D world and um, there seems to be a lot of fear. There seems to be a lot of um, drama in the world. And, you know, we had the Trump incident recently uh, and many other things that, that have rocked people's worlds however we are stepping into this new earth and uh, this new golden earth and the more we clear our energy field the more that we clear our traumas our beliefs our perceptions the more our frequency is aligned to the new earth and you may have noticed that there are probably times when you are more connected to the fifth dimensional frequencies of the new earth and your life is perhaps on that timeline. And you may have also noticed that sometimes you dip into the old paradigms. So when we're thinking about the old paradigms, we're thinking about perceptions and emotions such as fear, guilt, shame, um, shock, trauma, doubt, uh, grief, many different emotions that are quite heavy. And if you imagine that you are holding that energy as, um, let's say, curry, and there's nothing wrong with curry, but you would perhaps don't want to eat it breakfast, lunch and dinner and snacks in the evening, and then love, acceptance and freedom and um, oneness and unity is like having steamed vegetables or fruit on the other hand. So that you feel you could actually eat all day long and not feel that sense of heaviness. So if you imagine what is happening at the moment, anything that is not of the frequency of unconditional love and acceptance is being thrown out okay so you may have noticed i'm just noticing monica here said i had a healing peak for four weeks so monica obviously was going through a healing event where something was being released from her frequency that was of a dense energy who else has had that i i definitely had that last week who else has had that happening? Yeah, lots of hands going up. If you just put a, a yes in the, or a why in the chat, if you are experiencing the body doing some beautiful work and healing. Yeah. So when we're thinking about that, we are responsible. So we are responsible for our healing journey we are responsible for what is happening in our body. And I say that with no judgment. So we are responsible for everything that happens in our life. So um, if we are attracting something into our experience, and we're specifically talking about our body this evening, if we um, are attracting something and something is playing out, there is no blame and there is no judgment with it. All there is is observation. OK, so an observation that our soul is communicating to us that we are out of alignment with unconditional love, which is our mission, of course. And I'm all about our mission. That's my mission to help you on your mission. But essentially, our soul is conveying something. So what is it that we're not listening to? Or maybe we're listening to it, but it's showing up in our body as a stuck emotion. Okay. So who has had something in their body? Just put yes. Um, that has, that is not only showing up now, 
but that has been there as a what we would call chronic condition for a long time just gives me a picture so wow so many of you with chronic condition yeah so when we're looking at so from a from a, a neuropsychology perspective a meta health perspective when we're looking at something chronic we're looking at something that is ongoing okay so it's something that is ongoing and it's not like an acute situation an acute situation would be something that happens very quickly and leaves very quickly but a chronic condition is something that is continuing so just um out of interest just type in the chat if you know why do you think the body would be showing a chronic condition just i just want to see where you are with this so gabby thank you for that um so gabby's saying her chronic pain showed me my childhood abuse yeah and yeah okay thank you eliza yeah eliza's saying it's communicating that it's in distress in some way yeah so it's it's a teaching place isn't it if you think about it as a teaching place so your body is the teacher so if you imagine you come into this world and you, you're a soul and you choose to be human right so you say to yourself okay right i'm going to remember that i'm a soul having a human experience at some point in my life i'm going to remember that i'm not on my own that i have my guides and angels with me at all time and i'm also going to remember that i came for a really important reason Okay, so these three really important things are something that we chose to remember. And during that time, we were also going to remember that we have a barometer for our soul. And that barometer is our physicality that holds our soul. So if you imagine it like a jacket, so we've got our jacket and we've got our soul, let's imagine our soul like this beautiful ball of light, and we've got this jacket and we place the jacket around our soul so that we can carry out why we chose to come. But we decided that we would have an indication if we were not loving ourselves or we were out of alignment with why we came. Makes sense, doesn't it? We had to have a reason and we had to have an indication. So what's happened is what's happened is we've got lost along the way and we've been told that there's something outside of us that would fix us. Okay. And even actually over the last few years, um, that has perhaps been coming to the fore a bit more that there might be something outside of us that would fix us or, stop us from um being unwell for whatever reason okay so thinking about that and thinking about who you are as the most intelligent incredible being of light it makes sense doesn't it that we wouldn't come in without having all of these indicators we wouldn't come in thinking oh my goodness, this physical body is going to let me down or this physical body is not going to hold my soul. We wouldn't come in with that because we're so intelligent as a being. Our soul knows exactly why we're here and we're tapped in, tuned in to pure universal force and knowledge and wisdom. Okay, who believes that? yeah some of you believe it some of you don't believe it does anybody not believe that we are incredible beings and that we are tapped in to infinite intelligence right so if we look at perhaps what we've been brought up with and i was brought up with this as well if we're brought up with thinking 
that there's something outside of us that has the answers, i.e. Um, with religion, perhaps we're told that some thing, some entity has all the answers and makes all the decisions for us. And perhaps that follows down to the the white coat, you know, the, the doctor, the, the person that has authority, then we're, we're kind of handing over our power, aren't we? We're handing our power over to somebody else for our answers. So I have in my life, so who else has ever handed their power over to authority to make decisions for them? Yeah. Yeah. So we're all human, right? And we all have been down that road. No one is invincible from that. But we're in a place now where we are tapping into this infinite knowledge. And we're tapping into this incredible healing ability that we have. Okay. And I really want to take you on the journey of accessing your soul's infinite wisdom this evening. Because I think sometimes when we're in fear and we're in perhaps confusion and we don't know what's happening, then we forget to actually connect in with that part of us that is such an infinite library of knowledge, okay? So I really want to take you on that journey. I'm going to do that in a moment. So if you think about the, the, the major emotions that we might be holding that would possibly create a message in the body, what emotions do you feel you may have been holding on to that you haven't released that may be affecting your physical body? Just type in the chat. And let's see if we've got a, a theme. So we know it's trauma, but what emotion do we feel? So there's anger coming up here a lot. Fear. <laughs> yeah. Sadness, unworthiness, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Thomas, absolutely. Anger from beyond this life, absolutely. But we always know that all of these emotions that we're feeling right now are the sum of the parts of before. So if we think about, let's say, anger, for example, there will be something in this lifetime, in this childhood experience that created a, a message and a decision that the world was not a safe place to be. OK, so we know that fear is not a true experience, that there really is nothing to be afraid of. And it's false evidence appearing real. However, as a child, there were many times where we felt disconnected and we felt that we were doing it all on our own. And in those times, we are triggering, as Thomas said, we are triggering times before but we are also triggering epigenetics. So epigenetics are the thought form that we've brought in with us. So genetics, we know what that is, but epigenetics is the energetic frequency of the thought form. So we've got our mother's mother's mother, our father's father's father, we've got our ancestors, and we're also bringing in that frequency. So quite often we will see in um, a family, that there is something running in the family. So there may be, um, let's say arthritis, might be something that runs in the mother's line of the family, or it might be in the father's line of the family, or there might be something else, and it might be a heart condition that runs in the family. Who has noticed that in their family, that there is a conversation around somebody my dad had that or my mum had that. Has anyone noticed that? Mm. Sure. 
Yeah, so you've noticed that and there's sometimes a, a conversation around it, isn't there? There's like, oh, Aunt Frida had that and my mom had that and my auntie, you know, my nan had that. So it's almost like um, it becomes part of a generational language, okay? So wouldn't it be really amazing if we were to remember that perhaps we were meant to come in and we were meant to break the cycle of that, okay, through this ascension. And so stepping into the frequency of ascension, meaning we are stepping onto the new earth, to the new golden earth, then actually what's happening is we have to let go of all of these frequencies that no longer serve us or else we just stay in that old energy and that old paradigm. And so the Rainbow Galactics, um, one, of, one of the groups of beings that I work with, came through earlier on today and um, said to me that uh, one of the things that they're helping with right now is to bring in uh, the frequency of ascension, which is actually, if you look at my background, this is a really good indication of what the frequency of our light field looks like when we are in that high frequency or fine frequency i'd rather say than high high brings a hierarchy and it's not like that so if you imagine that that color which holds the full spectrum of light that cannot be omitted throughout your field unless you let go of the density of the fear and the shock and the trauma as people talk about a lot here and the guilt and the shame does that make sense yeah so isn't it amazing that we've got this opportunity that we've come in at this amazing time of expansion that we have got that opportunity to stop something from carrying on into the next generation okay now you may have heard of um bruce lipton and um he's he's the the king of epigenetics i think i would say and uh, he talks very much about how it's more the environment of the cell than it is to do with the dna and we think about um angelina jolie as an example of this where she didn't have breast cancer but she believed that she would get breast cancer because her sister I believe and her mother did and her grandmother did so she chose to have the operation to have her breasts removed because she believed very strongly that she would definitely get breast cancer and what Bruce said about that was that that was probably the right thing for her to do because she believed so strongly that she would get breast cancer. So what he was saying there is that it is all in, uh, and he has a book called The Biology of Belief, but it's all in the biology of belief, okay? And so as we change our beliefs, as we change our perceptions, as we change our frequency, we are able to make a huge difference in our life and our own life but we're also able to make a huge difference in others' lives. And what I believe we're here for is to shine our light for ourselves, but reflect that light out for others to see. Not so you tell anybody what to do, and not so you are the fixer, and not so that you have all the answers, but to help others see from your reflection how they can be. OK, and that opens the door for your friends, your neighbors, your family to actually go on their own journey by seeing you as the reflection. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So how many of us have looked at our families or our friends or even partners and said, oh, I wish they would just wake up? Who said that? Who has said that? Yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of my career um, 
watching my mum uh, with every ailment you could possibly imagine under the sun. And I remember um, being brought up with her that she had this book under her bed and this book was the book of diseases. So she would have it and she would look up things that she thought she had in this massive great book and it was kept under the bed and it was one of those kind of like chunky books like that. And so it's interesting how I went on this journey without really realizing why that actually I would be the complete opposite of that, that I would watch my mother and perhaps other people in my family experience that that's what their soul needed to experience but for me yes literally dr google i love that um for me it was uh, a journey that i went on to actually look at things from a completely different perspective and remember that we are our own holy grail and that we are our own inner healers okay so I just said the same. That's amazing. Yeah, TV commercials. So just before we do this process, I just want to show you, this is my um, book, Awaken the Light Within Your Heart. This is a healing book. Um, I was very lucky to win a Hay House Writers Competition in 2022, and it was published by Balboa Press. And um, in the book, there's a huge amount of healing and the processes. And I'll just show you this if you've got children. This is my new children's book that's just come out called The Guardian Wings to help children remember who they are. Because I really um, think it's important to, as a mother myself of teenagers, I think it's really important to start very young reminding our children that they are incredible lights in the world and that they have the ability to heal themselves. And my daughter who is 16, Thank you. Yeah, I love the title as well. Um, it, my daughter, who is 16 now, 16 and a half, nearly 17. Um, if she tries different things as teenagers do, I said, well, you know, think about what you're putting in your body. She goes, oh, mum, don't worry about it. She goes, as soon as I put it in my body, I release it and clear it anyway. I'm like, OK, I get it. Yeah. So, you know, they, they've been brought up understanding that they have the ability to release anything from their field and from their body. And how amazing. I wish I'd known that when I was a teenager. I wish I'd known that. So if we can help our children and our grandchildren and those that perhaps we work with to remember that they're not on their own, that they are incredible beings of light, that they can be whoever they want to be in the world, that they have their guides and angels, and that they're here to shine their own light. That to me is really all we need to do with children and help children. That's all we need to do. So if you wanna buy either of those, they're on Amazon. You can just get them on Amazon. Just put my name in, uh, Susan Kennard, and you'll find them. Okay, so let's do our first process and let's connect in with our soul. If you um, are not part of my newsletter, there's a free video course that you can get on my website. My website is just my name. In fact, Wendy might put my website here. Um, and you can sign up to the free video course. And on that free video course, there is a process where you can really connect with the messages in your body as well. You can connect with your guides and you can connect with your, your true higher self, all right? So you might like to, you might like to do that. Okay, all right, so let's do this. Let's come into our heart space. Just bear with me a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. So this is a process so that we can connect with our soul's guidance and the messages in our body that our soul is trying to convey for us. So let's reconnect into our heart space and just take another really beautiful deep breath. And just reconnect with your earth star and your soul star. 
And I want you now just to imagine that you could see into that light in your heart. Remember to breathe, keep breathing. And just imagine that you were sitting in that light in your heart. And as you're sitting in that light, you're connecting in with your higher self, the bigger part of you, the part of you that has all the answers, that knows everything about you and everything about your journey and about why you came this time. So I want you just to sit in that peace and calm and energy just for a few seconds. How would it feel if you had every single answer in your heart? You never needed to look outside of yourself. Just feel how that would feel. And then I want you to inquire to your soul. So the way that we do that is you ask your soul or your higher self and you just say, please can you tell me what unwanted emotion I am holding? So please can you tell me what unwanted emotion I am holding. So just take your time. And then you're going to ask, where am I holding this emotion in my body? So where am I holding this emotion in my body? So just trust your, your intuition, trust your knowing. So what emotion are you holding? And where are you holding it in your body? And you may feel a, a drawing to a different area in your body. So you may feel kind of drawn to your stomach or your heart or your legs or wherever it might be. So just connect in with that feeling. Connect in with that emotion. So I want you now to give that emotion a colour. Okay, so connect in with a colour, the first colour that you get. Connect it in with that colour. And I want you to say to that colour, as if it was a little part of you, I want you to say, I'm so sorry that you're feeling and whatever emotion it is. I'm so sorry you've been holding on to this emotion for so long. I'm so sorry that I didn't hear you. I'm so sorry it was too difficult to listen. I'm so honoured that you're here today so that I can acknowledge you so that I can love you And so that I can release this unwanted emotion from my physical body. So just take a deep breath. 
And I want you to imagine that there is a beautiful golden light, a stream of consciousness coming from your soul star all the way through the crown of your head into your body and releasing that color into the earth, releasing that emotion, washing it away from your body, washing it away from any organs that may be holding it, any thoughts, any perceptions, anything that isn't yours that you brought in with you, releasing it into Mother Earth to be transmuted. Fantastic. So I want you to now reconnect in with your soul and your higher self. Reconnect in and ask your soul Am I holding that emotion anymore? Just check in. Whatever emotion it was, fear, anger, shame, guilt, grief, sadness, confusion, whatever it was. And just check in and if you're still holding some of that emotion, I want you to bring that golden light through again and wash it through the whole of your body, releasing the last bits of that emotion, transmuting it into Mother Earth, taking a deep breath, so I want you now to connect into your soul and ask, what is possible for me now? What is possible for me now? And just listen. And when you feel ready, you can come back. So just type for me in the chat your emotion that you were holding, what color it was, so just put the emotion, the color, and how you feel now. So what we did there is a very brief example of how you can connect in with a particular emotion that has been running. When you transform it into a color, what you're doing is coming away from the emotion. So rather than actually focusing in on anger, let's say, for example, you can see it as a color and it takes away the intensity of it. So what we then did was we acknowledged, we gave compassion to a part of you that did not get your needs met. So we don't know how old that child was. It doesn't matter because we're not doing psychotherapy. But we're acknowledging a part of us by saying, I'm so sorry that you felt all of this anger. Now, you could have been in the womb, you could have been seven, you could have been one, you could have been three, whatever it is. And when we do um, deep work on our group, in our, in our membership, we will actually access the age of the child, etc. But today, what I wanted to do was take you through a process where you could actually see 
that you could release an emotion so fast that has been held in your body, okay? And when you hold these emotions, quite often there is um, pain in the body, there is aching in the body, there is chronic condition in the body because it's a constant reminder that you're not loving yourself because for whatever reason you did not get your needs met and that doesn't mean your childhood was horrendous and it doesn't mean your mum and dad didn't love you that may have been the case but generally it's experiences that get triggered and in that moment perhaps you were not held in a loving space or you were on your own in that moment and you felt that you were doing everything on your own. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how are you feeling now? Somebody type in the chat, how are you feeling now that you spent those few minutes connecting in with your soul that had the answers, of course, and by just doing a little process like that, you're able to know how to release. Even if you've never done any healing work, you know, I'm not your healer. No one on here is your healer. You are your healer and I am facilitating you to heal yourself. Okay. And I think that's really, really, really important. So we are going to do um, some more healing because I really feel like if you can, you know, experience um, some really deep transformation today, you'll know categorically that you truly do have the ability to heal yourself. Okay. So if you have something uh, showing up in your body, just don't tell me what it is, but just we'll come to the question answer later. But just type in the chat um, if you have a specific thing that's showing up in your body at the moment. Just put yes or no. Yes or no, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And after doing that little short process, how does it feel now, that message that's in your body? How does it feel now? Okay, a little lighter. That's good. Andrea said it's not there. A bit better. Activated, less pressure. Some clarity. That's good. Slight ease. Okay, good. Excellent. All right. So now we're... Okay, amazing. Sunita, less scared. That's perfect. Absolutely. So suddenly showing up in my body are oh, amazing that's when um the emotions are coming out and quite often they will show up in the body as what we would call a healing peak so i'm just going to explain to you about trauma shock and healing and then we're going to do another process where we're actually going to access the first time you ever felt disconnected all right so we're going to do that and then afterwards we're going to spend some time um, with question answer and um, I'll call the guides in for that um, because it, it really helps to get a perception on um, the, the bigger picture of, uh, of, of the actual uh, symptom as well, what's going on, okay? So if you think about being um, a complete system, okay? So a heart, a brain, a body, etc. right? So when we have a shock, whatever shock that might be, it might just be a conversation that was shocking. Uh, the shock goes into our heart and up to our brain. And in our brain, we have things called brain relays. Okay, so we have many of them. I won't get too sci sciencey for you, but essentially we have brain relays. Now, depending on how we perceived that shock, will depend on where that lands in our brain. 
which then depends on how it gets played out in our physical body. Okay, so an example of that is eczema. So if we think about the skin, the skin is related to the cortex part of the body, which is related to a fear of separation. So in eczema, just eczema, there's lots of other cases, but in eczema, we're looking at the actual physical symptom that we see on the skin as being a healing peak. So what that means is we've made an acceptance that we are not separated anymore. Okay. But if we continue to have eczema, we know that that goes way back. So when I used to work with um, people with eczema, babies with eczema, I wouldn't work with the baby, I would work with the mother on the birth trauma or the pregnancy trauma. Okay. So as I took them through soul rebirthing or whatever process I felt that was relevant, the baby then didn't have the eczema. Fascinating, right? And the reason for that is the baby no longer needed to play out that frequency of the fear of separation of the birth trauma or the pregnancy trauma or something like that. Okay. So makes sense, right? Makes sense that that's what happens. So if you have eczema, for example, and it's been something that you have in your adult life, I know that the work would be to heal the fear of separation of mother first. So that could be through birth trauma, that could be through um, another situation. And then if it still remains, I know it goes way back and it goes way back to our separation to God, our separation to source, our separation to who we truly are, to ourselves, okay? So do you get the kind of gist of it? of how, how that plays out. All right. Psoriasis is slightly different. It's, it's a double, it's a double conflict. So it's, I, I'm afraid to be separated from my mother. Let's say mother for now. I don't want to be separated. I have a fear of separation, but I also don't want her to be around. That's psoriasis. So that's a double conflict. Okay. So I want to be away from her, but I also have the fear of separation. Okay, and that might make sense to you, Rhonda, in your life or, or whoever you're, you're thinking about that has psoriasis. So we're thinking of we have the shock that happens in our life that then goes into the heart, which then goes up to the brain relay, which goes into the part of the body. Okay, so diabetes, for example, would be and I will answer your questions, but diabetes, for example, would be I feel that I didn't get what I was due. So I'm, I'm perhaps due an inheritance I didn't get, or I didn't get the job that I thought I should get, or I um, didn't get the love that I needed, but my brother got it, or my sister got it, or I felt hard done by, or it comes from the ancestral lineage that we brought through. So you may have heard of diabetes running in the family. Okay. That kind of thing. So do you see how it works? Like we're, you know, our physical body is amazing. It's actually talking to us at all times. And what do we do? We go and we suppress the message. Okay. And we suppress that message because it is too painful to work with that message. But it is time now for us not to suppress the message because the soul is really talking to us and the soul really wants to ascend to really live why it's here, why it's chosen to be here this time, why it's chosen to shine light into this world. And if we suppress the message with medication and drugs or addiction or whatever we're choosing to suppress the message with, we're actually stopping ourselves from really listening to why our body is showing that message. Okay. And you must have heard the song and the drugs don't work. Yeah. And I think what we're getting now is 
we're, we're seeing examples of where the medical model is no longer working for us. You know, and I, I do work with doctors. I have um, great admiration and respect for the medical model and doctors, but they can only go so far. And what they say to me is that they don't have the time and they don't have the space to be able to talk to their patients, to actually listen to what is going on for them in a holistic way. And the majority of people, all they need is actually to be heard and that's why the work we do and we do in in my community and privately the work we do is to actually give ourselves compassion okay so as we are giving ourselves compassion we are healing ourselves and we don't need that doctor to give us 10 minutes more in the doctor's room okay because we are giving it to ourselves Okay, good. So does it make sense to you about how it works when um, we have shocks or we have traumas or um, we have a, something that happens in our life, how it affects us and goes into our heart as a message and then up to our brain and then into the physical body? It makes sense to you, okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's have fun and i always say let's have fun because this journey is all about fun and joy so let's have fun and let's really go in deep now and work with a part of us don't get in your brain about it okay work with a part of us that first felt disconnected and so if you have a message in your body and there's something that's been showing up in your body and that might be why you're here then just hold that in your heart, in your space, and know that that's where your intention is going. All right? Okay. All right, let's do this. Is everyone okay? Yeah, excellent, good. This is a process to connect with the first time you felt disconnected in this lifetime. So let's take a deep breath in and release and close your eyes. Come into your heart space. Acknowledge yourself for showing up, for being ready being ready to release unwanted emotions. So I want you to think about that part of you that's showing up, that your soul is trying to convey. And it might be showing up through your body. Or if it's not showing up through your body, it might be showing up in your life. So it might be in your relationships, it could be in your financial situation, it could be in your work, it could be in your home, whatever it might be. So if you haven't got a physical message, then think of something that is happening in your world right now. And I want you to imagine that there is a wall in front of you. And this wall represents that situation. So whether that is your physical message or something outside of your body at this point. And that wall is representing that part of you that felt disconnected. So I want you to imagine, can you see over that wall? Or is that wall infinity, you can't see over it, or you might be able to see over it, but you can't see what's over the wall. So just no judgment, just acknowledge what experience you're having. And then I want you to imagine that there is a little child sitting next to you or standing next to you now. And I want you to connect with that little child and connect with how old they are. How old do they feel to you? And I want you to notice how they feel that this wall is in front of them. 
and just connect in with how they feel. And then is it possible for them to see over the wall? If so, what can they imagine or what can they see? And it might not be possible for them to see and that's okay. So I then want you to imagine that behind and around your child, there are three beautiful angels. And those angels are coming in and gathering around your child. And they're helping your child to feel safe once again. So notice how your child feels now. How are they feeling that they have their angels with them? Perhaps they forgot, perhaps they forgot that they had them to help them. And then I want you to imagine that one of those angels steps forward and they have a beautiful basket full of sparkling stars. The sparkling stars are all for them. It is just for them. And I want your child to choose the star that is the brightest star in the basket and it feels like connection. And I want them to take that star and place it in their heart. You might need to take a deep breath as they do that. Good. And then I want them to look in the basket and find the star of unconditional love. And just take that star, get them to take the star and place it in their heart. Feeling, a feeling of love for themselves, unconditional love, that they are worthy of unconditional love and that they are unconditional love themselves. They just forgot. And so I want them now to look in the basket and find the star of peace and calm and to pick it up and place it in their heart. Reminding them that they can come back to that feeling of peace and calm whenever they choose. They forgot that they could feel that sense of peace again. Mm. And then I want them to look in the basket to find the star of freedom. Notice how they feel when they find the star of freedom and they hold it in their little hands and they place it in their heart, feeling a sense of freedom, something they'd forgotten. They forgot how it felt to feel free. But as they sense it, they start to remember that they've always been free, that they've never been restricted, but they just forgot. And then I want them to look in the basket for a really special star. And this is the star of mission. Sometimes this star is really big and bright. So just notice what it's like. And get your child to hold that star and place it in their heart. Feeling the frequency of knowing their mission. They don't need to know exactly what it is. It really doesn't matter. Because they know that it's deep within their heart and soul. And now remembering that they don't need to know the specifics right now that everything is within them. And then I want them to look in the basket because there are three gifts. One is their crown of sovereignty. So I want them to place it on their head as if they're doing dress up. Another is their cloak of protection that they place around their shoulders. And the last one is their magic wand. And as they hold their magic wand, take a look at that wall that was in front of them. Can they still see it? 
Perhaps they can see a little bit over the wall now, or perhaps it's disappeared. If it hasn't disappeared, I want you to get your child to wave their wand and disappear the wall. But I don't want them to do anything else. Just disappear the wall. Okay, good. And now connect with what your child can see in front of them. They may see a playground, they may see a palace, they may see the sea, flowers, trees, whatever it is, landscape. It doesn't matter, whatever it is. And I want you to turn to your child and make sure that they can see you and they know you're there. And I want you to say to them, I'm so sorry that you felt you had to put up a wall to keep yourself safe. I'm so sorry that you forgot you are a divine being of light having a human experience. I'm so sorry that you forgot that you were never on your own and you had your guides and angels with you at all times. And I'm going to make you so tiny and place you in my heart and love you and look after you so that we can have the best fun together living our mission. So I want you to imagine that you pick up your little child you make them tiny and you place them in your heart. Remembering they've got their crown, their wand and their cloak. And we'll bring the angels in and all of the stars as well. So I want you now to have a look at what you can see where the wall was. Can you see a landscape? trees, the ocean, light, whatever you can see is perfect. So I want you to say these words. And as you say these words that I'm going to give you, I want you to imagine that you are stepping over the threshold of where the wall was. As I let go of the past, and the limiting beliefs. I step forward into the present. And I'm so excited for the new beginnings that I am creating in my life. So I want you to imagine that you are standing there with your arms out wide. And you're feeling the sense of freedom. And just notice what you can see around you. Notice the colours. Maybe you can see animals. Maybe you can hear noises. Just notice what you can see around you. And I want you to imagine that that vision of you in those surroundings becomes a beautiful rainbow ball of light and I want you to hold that ball of light in your hands and place it in your heart where you're sitting now. Imagine that that rainbow ball of light expands throughout every cell of your body And imagine you're sending that frequency out to the universe now. So that it has to change. Your frequency has changed. The mirror that you reflect now is completely different. What is possible for you now? And when you feel ready, you can come back.
How are you feeling? Good. That's called The Emotional Wall. And that is in my book. That's one of the processes in my book. Uh, so if you wanted to do it again, you could do it over and over and over and over again. So let me know how you are feeling and what is possible for you now. And does it make sense to you that this part of you, however you, however old you were, this part of you actually was feeling disconnected, put up what we would call a heart wall, an emotional wall, and stopped you from actually seeing what was possible. So not only what might be showing up in your body, but also what is possible for you in your whole life expansion. So how more abundant you can be, how much freer you can be, your relationships to be more harmonious, for your body to be free, basically. So does it make sense to you that we have to do that inner work? We have to do that journey so that we change something about what is showing up in our life. So not only our physical body, and when it gets to the physical body, it's because we haven't heard and we haven't listened. Okay. So the physical body is almost like the, the last chance saloon. The body's saying, okay, it's your last chance. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that you're so amazing, that you're so loved, that you're the most amazing being. And I'm trying to tell you that. Okay. And that is what your body is doing. All it is doing, it will never do anything against you. There is nothing to fight with your body. There is nothing to battle. In fact, the absolute opposite. If you, if there's something showing up in your body, whether it's now or any time in your life, love that part of you. Give compassion to that part of you. You know, um, when we have uh, deeper pictures of dis-ease, and I'm not going to call them disease because it is a dis-ease that creates the dis-ease. When we have uh, deeper pictures, is what we would say in, in uh, naturopathy and in meta health, we know that this is a really beautiful opportunity to come home. Um, and cancer is one of those a really amazing opportunity to come home to who you are. And so when you're coming home to who you are, you're coming home to remembering that you are an incredible soul and you have a human experience and you only have a life this time. You got one another time, but you've only got this life this time. And I really believe that at this time of ascension, we have many beings that are really supporting us. Uh, many of the galactics work with me and they are always saying that they are here to assist us in our ascension frequency. And so on our membership, on our in our soul family, I call it our soul, soul ascension membership, this is exactly what we do. So if you're interested in going on that journey with us, Wendy will put the link there. Wendy, if you can put the link to the membership there. But you can also find the link to the membership on my website, which is susankennard.co.uk. And there's a whole page on it. And if you really want a deep dive, there is another level to my membership, which is the VIP level where you can get to work with me for three, six, nine or 12 months intensively. Uh, where you get to spend um, doing lots of private one-to-one -one work with me so we can go on that journey together as well as being part of the community and part of the soul family as well. So, Wendy, thank you for putting that note there. Oh, Marriott, thank you. Marriott says, thank you, Susan. My name is Marriott. 
Arsena, I feel very good. I will need your book. You're very welcome. Wendy, perhaps you can put the link there to my book. Just to say, I actually did audio record it in a studio. So all the processes and the channeling from the guides, I actually did record the book. So if, you, if you're one of those people that would prefer to listen than read, then it's also on Audible on Amazon. So you might like that. Okay, you're, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Oh, Lindley has the audio book. Amazing, amazing. I'm planning to do the children's one that way as well at some point. So if you would like to ask me a question, then uh, this might be a really good time to do it. And so you can put a cue in the chat and I will come to you. So if you just put a cue in the chat, Karen, amazing. So Karen is the first cue. So Karen, if you um, would like to open up your sound. Hi, Karen, lovely. Hi, Suzanne. This is wonderful. I am oh. not... I did not remember that process, but I will go back to your book. I have it on Kindle and do it again. Amazing. Just a yeah. it's amazing. it's a very powerful process and it we can use it for anything. So, you know, if there is something showing up in your body or if, you know, there's a relationship issue or there's a money problem or there's something, we always go back to that part of us that felt disconnected. So when we feel, I stumbled upon this just to say for you and for everybody else, um, that when I worked with veterans many years ago, um, veterans had told their story um, hundreds of times and they'd taken all the pharmaceuticals and nothing was working. And so the guides gave me these processes um, and, the, and they're, they're upgraded now, they're fifth dimensional now, but they gave me those processes to actually work with people where I didn't need to know anything. So we actually don't know what we don't know. And these parts of us have been laying dormant for such a long time and they, they show up for us, but we can't do it from talking therapy. You know, we, we now, our frequency is changing so much and so fast and the timelines are shifting so quickly that we can't really talk about it. Talking about it doesn't get to the parts that have been held there for so long, you know, um, and quite often they're pre-verbal as well. So thanks, well, Karen. Thank you. I've been carrying a lot of bulks for the last couple of years and I'm being told in my abdomen and stomach and I'm being told that it's past life and, and that's, that's what I was wondering. Is there anything that you see that... Yeah, so um, with the with the stomach, because I heard you say the stomach, right? Is this your abdomen and stomach? It's a little bit muffled, but I think I heard that. Um, so when we're thinking about the colon, and um, we're thinking about our digestive system, quite often we're thinking about um, some unresolved chunk of anger from the past. Okay. So that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, there was anything awful that happened to you. But quite often, if we're holding on to something in our digestive system, it's a it's if you imagine it as a chunk of anger that we couldn't process. OK, so quite often um, with the colon, we would be looking at that. We would definitely be looking at that. Um, and so that might be the work and you could do that with um, compassion. So you could, you know, say, right, this is my intention today. I want to work with my digestive system. I want to work with this. So you connect in with it and you just say, I'm so sorry that you're holding on to so much anger. I'm so sorry that you didn't feel it was safe to process this information. I'm so sorry there was no one there to help you understand it. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. And you might not even know how old that child was. And you're probably right, it's from times before, but it will have been triggered in this lifetime. Yeah. So much. Love yeah. You. Does it make sense to you though? If you if you if I say that to you, does it make sense to you? It makes sense because anger has come up a million times and I can never figure out where it's coming from. But yeah. so much like and we are very good at that. We're very good at suppressing anger because maybe at some point it wasn't safe to express the anger. So we suppress it because it wasn't safe in that moment and we're really good at suppressing it. 
And so where does it go? To let's the back. push it down. Yeah, let's push it down as far as we can. And that is, um, yeah, absolutely. So that's where I would probably go with it, Karen. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah. And just to say, Karen's um, written a book called Let's Be Peace, and I've co-authored it with her. Yes. So, and yeah. be out this fall, but you'll, you'll let everybody know. Absolutely. Of course I will. Diligently working on getting it done. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Okay, who's next? Let me see. Um, who's the next queue? Uh I might have to get you to do this, Wendy. So, because there's so many. Who's the next one? Wendy, could you just ask them to open up their sound? The next queue. It's Laurie, so I can, I think it's an A she's put, but I think she means Q. So, Laurie's Engelbratch. Laurie's? No? Okay. Uh, the next person is Ag. Niskia. Sorry, I can't say it very well. Oh, Anishka. there she is. Hello. Is that how I say your name? No, not at all. Anishka. 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 Yes. Thank you for choosing me, Suzanne. Um, I was wondering if you could help me to... Um, I did the whole process and um, I saw uh, before I called my inner inner child I saw that behind the wall is a playground <laughs> but mm -hmm. when the inner child when my inner child um, made the whole uh, the, the wall disappeared I, I saw the view something like after the uh, cold war the wall in Berlin was crushed so mm -hmm. I saw this kind of you know sad view of uh, all bricks everywhere and kind of emptiness. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. maybe my inner child needs to find her own happiness. <laughs> yeah, worry. I would say I would say um, what I got from that as you as you were talking, explaining it, and it's really helpful actually because it may be that other people yeah. have had a similar experience. So what that means is there is another part of that child that needs compassion. So when we do it privately, so say, for example, if I was working with you privately, then um, it would be very tailored. So I, I get told, so I, I'll be channeled exactly what the emotions are. But you can also connect with that yourself. So when you do that process again, it, rather than just listening to what I'm saying, you could say, I'm so sorry that you ha felt you had to put up this wall and listen to your child. So listen to what she needs. Say, you know, if she's feeling sad or feeling that she's in a battleground or a war zone, then just say, I'm so sorry that you feel so alone with this. Yeah. So okay. you would take it through step by step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to say, maybe you can direct me what I developed last week it's on both legs um uh -huh. in front of ankles i have kind of bumps soft one full of like with symptoms and it never happened to me before uh -huh. on your of, ankles yes before i have ankles like behind it and those bumps are in front of it towards the uh, toes kind of so I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Yes. So you're saying before your ankles, so do you mean in, on the top of your feet? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying, Wendy? On the outside only. So both legs, um, yeah. outside um, outside of legs, because we have ankles on in front, inside and outside, yes? So, oh, I'm getting you. The outside, outside. side of your ankles. Yes. Right. I'm with you. Sorry, my love. I get you. Now. No, it's okay. it's okay. I am not um, the English, so you know. This is really good. This is really good. So what, Um, this is a really good one, right? So you're saying that you've got bumpy bits on the yeah. outside. Yes. And is this, on, is it on the skin? It's inside. Or it's on the bones? Um, so I can feel my bone, uh -huh. but this is more towards the front of the foot. Yeah, but my question is, 
Yeah. Is it the skin or is it the bones? Skin. It's on the skin. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. So, so what this is, is, um, a healing of separation. So with, let me just mute Natalia, um, a healing of separation. So there's been an acceptance that you are not separated. Now, ankles, Agnesia, yeah. are related to mother guilt. Okay. Okay. So does that make any sense to you? You know, my mom. <laughs> I don't need a story. Just yeah, yes or no. Just yes or no. <laughs> Could be. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what, what I feel about this is that you've made an acceptance that you do not need to hold on to your mother's guilt anymore. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And if they stay there, if the skin stays there and you continue to have it, we know that it goes further back. Okay. But cool. I would say if it's well, just come that. up, this is called an acute situation. Mm -hmm. And I would say that you've made you know shock up to the brain into the body you've made acceptance and so what your body is doing is going into a healing peak okay and okay. then it will go into regeneration mm -hmm. yeah well it's in a healing peak right now thank you i think that i know which guilt <laughs> amazing yeah <laughs> excellent okay. and of course if you are a mother and once again we're not going to get into a story but if you are a mother and you happen to be a mother, then that might be triggered as well from your own experience. But mm -hmm. it's always connected to the frequency of guilt of mother or mm -hmm. mother guilt. Okay. All right. On the ankles. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Great Thank question. You. Thank you. Who's next, Wendy? <laughs> so many. Actually, I think I it's the last. Yeah, oh, Larice, yeah. Hi, you're there now. Excellent. What's Hi. your question? How are you doing? All right. Could, is there anything you could be, tell me about headaches? Because I have asked myself how many times about headaches. So is the headache something that is ongoing, meaning all the time? Is the headache something that happens once in a blue moon? It's all the time. It's all the every, time. Every day. And it's been there since I was a little girl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm actually, the guys are actually talking to me about this one. So um, what they're showing me is the occipital nerve, um, which is at the back of your head here. Mm -hmm. And it feels like it's, um, there's pressure there and it feels out of alignment and it feels like it's, it, there's, um, what I would suggest is this is about, thank you. This is about being a pressure cooker. Do you know what pressure cooker is? It's, it's a symbolism. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm feeling like, um, there's, there's this feeling of, um, a restriction in the flow of the energy is what the guides are showing me. I have a, a doctor guide that works with me and funny enough, he, he stepped in earlier on today and he's showing me this, uh, clairvoyantly and I can see it and it's slightly, did you have a trauma? Don't tell me stories, but did you have a birth trauma? Were you, did you come into the world suddenly or something? I think, I think there was, yes. It feels sudden to me. It feels like, like that. And so that's perfect. You chose that. Your soul chose that. But I can actually see that there's something there that's creating pressure. So my advice would be to go and see a cranial sacral osteopath cranial sacral not someone who you know pulls your limbs or anything like that but someone who works with the energy and the bones mm -hmm. because i feel like that will really help you and then after that i'm hearing that as you as you release that there's going to be a massive awakening and an opening of your crown energy and this is why you needed to ask this question because what the guides are telling me now is that um, the pressure that you're feeling now is because you're not able to bring that full channel all the way through. Yeah, does that make sense to you? Yes, I am, I, yeah, I'm, I'm mumbling. I've got goosebumps, I've got tears. Yes, yeah. thank you. 
so 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 much for that thank you so much no you're so welcome you're so welcome all right my love um, and just to say, if you, if people get headaches, like after this session, for example, then that's called a healing peak. And what happens is when we've released things and our body has um, made acceptance, the neural pathways are shifting, our expansion is happening, our third eye is opening, our crown is opening, quite often we might get a headache, all right? So that's perfectly normal. So that's a different type of headache to what we were just talking about. Right, so the next person is Celeste. Hi, thank you. Um, Hi, Celeste. So I'm wondering about chronic bladder pain and mm -hmm. also like heart pain like that comes and it's like, you know, stabbing pains, like palpitations. And that also kind of goes along with like difficulty breathing too, like lung mm -hmm. pain. So it's two, two things. So we'll do the bladder first and then I'll ask you the question. So anything to do with the bladder is about a territorial conflict, right? So if you are, um, uh, so quite often if people have babies, um, they'll quite often have bladder problems afterwards and people put it down to having the birthing experience. But most of the time it's because there's been an invasion of our territory, right? So, you know, whatever it might be, and there's this invasion of territory. So quite often the bladder, if people have been, um, I'm not saying you have, but um, people have been sexually abused, quite often people will have bladder problems later on in life or throughout their childhood. Um, so does that make any sense to you about a territorial issue? Yeah, absolutely. And I've never heard that from that. Like I've looked up things about, it's mm. like, oh, bladder has to do with like worry and all the stuff and nothing is really. Yeah doesn't pinpoint it does it no, but that yeah. is like definitely what it i'm pretty sure that's like connected to what it is yeah and sometimes it is you know someone's left our territory and we don't want them to leave our territory so then there might be sort of like we, we get called cystitis and things like that right mm -hmm. yeah or yeah. someone has invaded our territory and we feel uncomfortable with that situation and that's a trauma okay yeah so that that helps you with the bladder so yeah uh, that makes sense. yeah so if we're thinking about the heart the heart quite often um especially at the moment actually there's a huge amount of heart stuff going on um from the perspective of our heart is expanding so we are, you know, we are opening our heart field, we're opening our heart chakra. Quite often, there's a lot of people at the moment with like heart palpitations. And it's where we are, frequency is shifting at such a rate. That's one thing, that's ascension. Okay, another thing would be, if you were experiencing um, for years and years and years, heart pains. So which one are you experiencing? It's the first one. It's only been the past like few months. Yeah. And it does get better. Like recently I've been working on a lot of heart stuff and like bringing attention to it. So it has okay. gotten better. For, like a few weeks ago, it was getting like scary and I was like, not sure what to do, but yeah. I figured it out. Yeah. So my, my, um, so also with the heart, okay. The heart also is going into a healing peak. So when we when we um, receive those pains in the heart, and just to say, like, you know, as I said before, I'm not a doctor. OK, so if you feel you need to visit a GP, then you must do that. OK, and that's perfectly fine. But I'll just say to you from my perspective, when we have a pain in our heart, quite often it's a healing peak. Mm -hmm. So we have gone through an acceptance. Um, and if you've been doing a lot of work on the heart and, you know, and we've just done some work on the heart just then as well, the heart wall that was there. So it might be that you get a bit of a palpitation or you get some heat or something like that. OK, but 100 percent, it could be going through a, a healing peak. But I definitely feel and as I look at it, I can see there's um, almost like um, thank you. There's, this is Ashtar actually. So this is galactic, very galactic. And it feels like there's a big portal opening for you as well in your heart. So I do feel like you're very connected to the galactic frequencies. That makes sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. So there is a, there is a portal um, opening in your heart actually to be more connected to them. Yeah, definitely. Are you on my YouTube channel? Um, my name, just my YouTube, um, my YouTube channel. Oh, sorry. What was the question? 
Well, I have a YouTube channel and quite oh. often um, the Galactics will come free and do channeling. So definitely if you, um, everybody, yeah, sign up to my YouTube channel. It's just my name, Susan Kennard. And every Friday there's a five minute frequency tune up and I quite often will go on uh, live as well and do healing. So definitely yeah. sign up to that. But yeah, mm. yeah, the Galactics are very much around you. So I feel like you are going through a big, um, uh, a big awakening in your heart, but also whatever was going on in your bladder or is going on in your bladder, bladder is a message that it's time for you to let go of the the resentment and the anger from before. Makes sense? Yeah, yeah, mm. it's definitely resentment and anger, and that so that has been pissed off for like yeah, the bladder, the bladder <laughs> is pissed off. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Celeste, it would be amazing if you came into the soul family, because I think you'd really enjoy doing that work. And you're very conscious and very Wendy's nodding as well. Yeah. Um, I'll look into it. Definitely. Yeah, I, just, definitely I literally concert. jumped on this today and I, mm. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's not for everyone, but it's for people that are really ready to go on the journey of expansion and really living your mission, you know, really living your mission. And so if you're ready to do that, then it's it's time to step in. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting there. I've been getting a lot of messages and people kind of telling me that as well. And also mm -hmm. like the galactic stuff is like yep. starting to come in. I'm like, I don't know what that is. And so, but it's something. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I guess the other interesting thing I had was for those few months I had like a rash, like mm -hmm. just right in the center of my chest, like a really big, like, mm -hmm. I guess it was, eczema, I don't know, but, and while that was going on and just recently it started fading away. Yeah. Um, there you go. So healing separation, you were going to get this by the end of today. So healing separation. So that, that skin showing where it is healing the separation of your, of your heart, right? Your heart space. Yeah. Amazing. I love it Thank when people you. get it. I love it when you get it, like you can get it. Oh yeah, it makes sense, right? I'm healing my heart. Amazing. Okay, Marianne, is this helping you guys? Is this, you know, the questions Hello? are helping you? Yeah. Marianne? Can you hear me? Where is she? Oh, there she is. Hi, Marianne. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, I have several diseases, <laughs> which runs through our families ah. so i was curious about that mm. hit, me with one. hit me with one. Oh, hit definitely one. heart disease is a big one yeah and is there anything ever going on with your liver no mm, okay not that i know of anyway <laughs> if you if you if you think about um the body being a whole system and um, the liver being the planner of the body. So anything that goes on, um, if we're thinking about heart dis-ease, we're really thinking about what is held in our liver as a message, okay? Okay. So if you have multiple messages in your body, my place to work would be 100% with the liver. Okay. okay. And the liver is amazing. So the liver actually is the only organ in the body that has the ability to reproduce the cells and completely create a new liver. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And that's because the liver is the planner of the body. So if you're trying to get pregnant or you're trying to heal something in your body, that is where you start. You start by healing the liver. Okay. Mm, and the emotions of the liver and um thank you yeah and the guides are saying to me that there is a um a frequency of abandonment held within you does that make sense to you yeah yeah feeling unwanted even though you're very wanted and you're very loved there is a feeling of being unwanted yeah. What's the other messages yeah. that are coming up in your body? Um, within the last two years, I've had uh, something called warm hemolytic anemia. 
It's where your old blood cells eat your younger blood cells. Mm, okay. And arthritis really bad. So arthritis is always very much about how critical we are of ourselves and how we are quite unkind to ourselves and we criticize ourselves. And from a science perspective, it's the body dumping uh, calcium and sodium in a non-life-threatening place. But from an emotional, spiritual, metaphysical perspective, it is us really criticizing ourselves or being very criticized as a child. Okay. Yeah, which turns into criticizing ourselves, okay? Not loving ourselves and not uh, being kind, okay? Next. <laughs> what was the I'm other I'm a one? diabetic too. <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah. Oh, yes, blood. Yes, you. I've just been reminded you spoke about anemia. So when we're thinking about the blood, we're thinking about our identity. Okay, so we're thinking about what part of us it hasn't quite aligned to our true identity. And I'm not talking about sexual identification or anything like that, just our identity as a soul having a human experience. Yeah. So say that again. So if you think about blood, okay, it's okay. actually the medulla part of the brain, but that's the science bit. But if you think <laughs> about that as being our identity, Okay. So who are we? Who am I as a woman? Who am I as a little girl? Who am I as a human? Who am I as a soul in this world? Yeah. Okay. So what it sounds like to me is that there is thanks a miscommunication. So the blood is is showing you that there's a miscommunication around your identity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see that. Can you see that? Yeah. Or the abandonment, abandonment issues and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Marianne, um, some work that might be really good for you is firstly, definitely get my book if you haven't got it, but do some inner work where you're actually giving compassion to that little child, because I actually really feel that child is actually in the womb. So it was even before there was any language or anything okay. that you could even make sense of yeah and that's why i feel um and the guides are telling me that's why it runs in the family so to speak because okay. it comes in and it plays itself out in the generations yeah but you're so the I one you're the one to change it okay that's what's my next question <laughs> was it is that your next yes, question? If I, if I can stop it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to also see um, your body as so clever, okay? So rather than what quite often we're told we need to battle something or we need to fight it or we have to, my body's letting me down or something like that, mm -hmm. okay? And I know when you're in pain and when there's something showing up in your body, it's really tricky to turn that around in that moment. But in the moments when perhaps you're not so much in pain, and I would say every day this would be really important for you to do, is to really put your hand on your heart and just say, thank you so much for showing me. And then, yeah, so your body's showing you. And then I'm so okay. sorry. I'm so sorry that you didn't feel loved. I'm so sorry that you didn't feel cared for. Okay. And we don't know how old that is. I've always is. felt there's a disconnect. Yeah trying yeah. to find that okay yeah yeah but you know our soul chooses these journeys marianne okay and there's no mistakes but it is our choice whether we go on that journey or not and that's why i've said you know being in the soul family is not for everybody because it is a journey where you're ready to step into it you know and sometimes there's tears Sometimes there's, you know, things that come up and we don't always want to look at it, but it is a very safe space to be held. And I hold your hand on that journey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my darling. Thanks for your question. Thank you for talking. Okay. Um, who's next? Sunita. 
Hello. <laughs> Hi, Sunita. Hi. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Susan. This was amazing. That's what You're exactly welcome. I needed today. Mm. I have a bit of a question and I just about my son so he's four year old and when you yep. mentioned about children carrying something to do with parents so he's mm -hmm. four and he has these ulcers in his mouth for last two months non-stop one after another one okay. after another yeah and i'm just thinking is there something i could yes do? so it's um so with him um for for, for anyone actually but that's yeah. unresolved words of anger oh. so there's things that he wanted to say that he hasn't been able to say Okay. Yeah. So if you think of what an ulcer is, yeah, it's it's quite hot, it's sore, it's angry essentially, isn't it? Yeah. And so what it is is angry words. Okay. And it doesn't mean you know he's angry at you or anything like yeah. that. Don't, don't feel don't feel that. Yeah. But there's something. So when you when you go to bed, when he goes to bed, yeah. Right, ask to speak to his soul when you go to bed, yeah. and yeah. do the compassion for him. Is yeah. he in the children's chamber? Is he in the children's? No, I haven't put him there. No. Okay. But I feel like I might need to do that. So. Yeah, 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 definitely. Put, yeah. Mm. So uh, I don't know if I mentioned um, to everybody, I've got a whole um, list of galactic crystal healing remote chambers. And one of them is a children's chamber. And I definitely would suggest mm. that you put him in the children's chamber. Yeah. Um, just so that he's kind of protected from mm. everything from the outside, but also he can it can help him heal things that are not even his. Yeah. 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 Um, but the ulcers, I would definitely say that that is words that he couldn't say. Yeah. He's so very. Can... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, he's very verbal. He talks loads. So I suppose yeah. if I would speak to him, he would actually be able to tell. But he might. Not, not no that. Not so what you yeah what you could do is um you can be his it's like proxy healing yeah so you could so as if he was um you yeah. and you could say i'm so sorry that you've got all these words inside you yeah that are angry i'm so sorry it's so difficult to express these angry words yeah yeah so yeah. as if you are talking to him yeah Mm -hmm. okay thank you no you're thank welcome you so darling thank, thank you. you thank you but definitely um wendy will put the link i'm sure wendy will put the link for the galactic crystal healing chambers there mm -hmm. and oh thanks Wendy. you've already done it um and um yeah the universal love one anyone can put anyone in so if you've got a neighbor or a friend or um you know family member the universal love one you need no permission. You can absolutely put anyone in that one and all the rest, it has to be a soul's choice. Right, let me find, uh, where are we? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's find, ah, uh, Taylor. Taylor. Yes, thank you, Susan. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Susan. We hmm. love Susan. We're learning so much in the classes. Um, and Susan... Taylor's in my channeling class. So I have um, <laughs> an advanced channeling class, which I never even mentioned. And the next one will be October. So if anyone is working with their guides like Taylor, very pure channel, then uh, you want to take it to the next level, then the channeling class is there. So Taylor, what's your question? Thank you. The question is, could we have a shock as small as a car accident, like a fender bender, or as big as having a big betrayal? And if so, are those are called all those are called shocks, right? And then how do we get to the most inner root of the issue that holds us back? Like, like in your book or with, you know, one of your... So two questions. So the, so answering the question about the accident or the words or something that happened. Yes, all shocks, right? And some of them physical shocks, right? So you actually really physically feel that in an accident, right? But sometimes it's an emotional shock and it just goes straight in. Um, so definitely, yes, absolutely. With an accident, there's no accidents, are there? You know, it's always there to stop us, right? For whatever reason. Um, regarding uh, getting to the root, look at what is showing up in your outside experience because your outside experience is not outside okay. so if you imagine and kind of imagine the mirror 
that's being put out to the world, what you're getting back is a reflection. So have you got an example? Um, you just uh, want to get to the root. You, you so yeah, the root. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I really want to get to the root. Um, I want to get to the root of things. Well, my outside example is that I'm not as motivated about things as I was ah. before. I was a complete workaholic and I work 16 to 18 hours a day on mm. average for a really long time. And now I just, I don't have the motivation and I'm like, what is happening to me? So this is something that's on the outside and I'm thinking about, is there a shop or something, something that. So the be- feeling, the feeling that I get with this and without going into story, um, sure. what, what I'm feeling about this is um, worthy and deserving. Mm. So the, 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 those are the emotions that are coming up for me when I think about it. Am I worthy and deserving to actually live a life of ease and grace. Mm. <laughs> and work is not hard. <laughs> so uh, when you live your mission, I'm like, I'm not even looking at the time. I have no idea what the time is because I'm I'm living my mission. I'm absolutely loving it. I, it doesn't, I don't see it like work. So to me, yeah. So you are worthy of a life of ease and grace, Taylor. Okay. Yeah, that's where I feel. That's where I feel like I have to work hard. I, you know, this whole kind of like, I have to work hard to earn a living. And that's not true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just need to get to the root of that then. Yeah. So you could, you know, you could do the emotional war and you could say, right, this is showing up. This is what I feel show me the first point I felt disconnected because it's always, I feel disconnected and we're never disconnected from source. We just feel we are. Okay. Thanks darling. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Oops. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um, Okay. Next is, oh, thanks Anita. Anita said she loves the audio book and Scotty. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Elise. Elise per- um, Perriat, is that right? Yeah. Perriat. <laughs> Elise, what's your uh, question? <laughs> uh, so I also have multiple things, but I want to focus on the latest things that showed up, mm-hmm. on me, which were, so last year I had like a professional work thing where I took care of two children, which... Um, like their dad was in, in how do you say? Like when he was like an addict and he in rehab, rehab, yeah. I think okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you looked after them because their dad wasn't there to look after them. Yeah, it's like it's one of my jobs. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And it was a very long case where I started in July and it went on until December. And I I switched in shifts with another uh, caretaker in mm-hmm. in the beginning it was one month and then so what was the what's month, the what's the question about yeah the question was like I was in immense stress because I was mm-hmm. obviously getting all the the things of the kids as well yeah and um and I already started gaining weight beforehand and I couldn't really make out why. Mm-hmm. And then that developed even further. And then um, my hands and feet began to get very dry and drier and drier and drier. And it's wow. still on until now. It's mm-hmm. already like getting better. My hands are better. Oh, and they're orange. Um, and and my feet now are especially like, the, they're both still very dry, but the feet are like, um, weekly i'm taking bath and scrubbing the skin off so that they get like kind of relief mm-hmm. and i already had like this itching thing all over my body since okay. i was little that would wander uh, i had it on my head then right. after my first separation i got it underneath my pits like my armpits and then uh, so, so say that say that again after what separation you got my it first separation uh, 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 in the relationship ah and okay. and so 
my hands and feet sometimes also are very itchy mm -hmm. and yeah the itchy thing would be the other thing that would be interesting to me mm -hmm. because like I also have like a spot uh, in my genital area like mm -hmm. but on the top like it's not like in the middle of the genital area it's on the top and it's just like not healing for I think now seven years or something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's just something that that so yeah. it sounds like that the situation with the children being separated uh from a loved one their dad even though yeah. their dad um has difficulties and is using something to cope with life yeah trying He's to also build. like a very toxic parent like that's the thing yeah. like I, but it doesn't that matter could not children. put them first and they don't see yeah. it yeah. Yeah. yeah but but i worked in child protection for about 15 years and i worked in assessment with children that were abused and trafficked children and you know drugs and alcohol and addiction and what children do is they try to make the parent right whatever yeah. they're doing yeah. they try sure. to make the parent right i know you know that so um the, the the separation that they will be feeling and the trauma that they will be feeling it is my feeling that that has triggered your own yeah, fear of separation sure. yeah. mm -hmm. that's what my feeling sure. is as yeah, i'm sure. as i'm talking to you and um so that is amazing because that's your inner work but your inner work is actually from your own early experiences mm -hmm. and it's interesting how you chose uh, a job to work you know on that level right yeah it's it's some i i, I switched between a lot of jobs mm. so it was yeah it was, that one was, happened yeah. upon you right and you said yes yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing like I find it very interesting too yeah, and exactly. always like I'm, I, after every uh family I'm like I'm not doing that anymore and then I'm like, yeah. so <laughs> so yeah so the in, the inner work would be um your own feelings of of separation um to mother to father to source okay um and that and and the feet and the hands if you think about what the feet are they are they are a connection to earth and the hands are what we hold. So what can we hold on to? What we can't, what can't we hold on to? And those little children couldn't hold on to their dad. They couldn't hold on to him. He's, for whatever reason, he's gone somewhere. So they couldn't hold on to him. And if you imagine what your hands were doing was playing out that I can't hold on, okay? And the feet, I feel separated from essentially being here in this world, okay? So, but the itching is good because there is a sense of an acceptance that you feel you are connected. All right. Yeah, so also, like often very hot, like right now, for example, yeah. they're like pulsating hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's yeah, it. Like itching going well. on. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All the time there, and it sounds to me like you've got it, like you access it, and it's now just time to release it. And and yeah. do you have like suggestion uh, suggestions how I can aid myself? Yeah. Really? That that would definitely be the inner child work. So you know, in my you can either my YouTube channel has got a load of videos and so on, but you can also in my book if you haven't got it already in my book, and if you get the audio book as well, I take you through the processes. So you can hear me, and I'm like with you in your lounge, and I can say. Okay, so now put your hands on your heart. <laughs> okay. So, um, and there are many processes. There's a really good one in there as well, cutting the ties with forgiveness. And so essentially um, you can do that with um, mother and father and it clears across all lifetimes, especially this lifetime as well. And it takes you through a process to forgive yourself, but to forgive them as well. All right, so that might be a really good one. And for everybody, yeah, that that's sounds an like amazing <laughs> process, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's like process. my process for all my life. <laughs> yeah, and I'm this, very this good is already. Really good, this one. <laughs> we made out like this uh, report now, but I I mm. sense that there is still a lot to forgive. So yeah, 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 but it's also on layers. You know, it's layers. <laughs> um, and it might be that you're ready just to take it to perhaps a slightly deeper layer. Mm -hmm. Thanks, my darling. Thank you for your Thank question. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Rhonda.
Hi, Susan. Hi, Rhonda. Hi. Liz, I have a congenital birth defect. It's a mm -hmm. bicuspid aortic valve. And as a result, I had open heart surgery when I was three. Wow. I just wanted any insights that you had. Well, I mean, I, I definitely believe that the soul chooses every experience. And so whatever reason you chose to come in and experience that, and the heart is very much about you overcoming. Have you gone, Rhonda? Where are you? I see you're oh, gone. oh, you're there. <laughs> the, the, the heart is very much um, about overcoming the pain of the past as well. That's just the guys are telling me now. So I feel like you were, oh, thank you. You were actually coming in and changing that theme in the family. So by coming in and experiencing it, you've actually changed the theme of the family. Does that make sense to you? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like you were the one that was going to come in and sort it out and then it wasn't going to go any further. I, yeah. I've been feeling that a lot lately. Yeah. Yeah. I really feel that. But yes, definitely. And I'm, and I'm really feeling like it's stopped now. Like I don't see it going forward you know it was almost like it stopped with you it's a terrible expression isn't it but the buck stopped with you <laughs> yeah. but your soul Perfect. definitely chose that one yeah it's great to hear that can i ask one more question what mm -hmm. about using weight as protection so that's interesting that you said that right using weight as protection yeah so i i think that um 100% that we do put on weight when we are trying to protect ourselves. And it's really accessing that part of you that needed to feel protected. Okay. So um, sometimes it is because we don't want to be seen. And quite often that is because we may have experienced um, unwanted attention yes. when we were younger. And so um, when we've experienced unwanted attention through abuse or through anything, then we put the layers there to protect ourselves from being touched, seen um, again. Yeah. yeah. So, that, so that inner work is really, really important because it not only protects us from being seen, but it protects us from really standing fully in our truth and our authenticity, the guides are saying. Yeah? Yes. Does that make sense to you? It makes perfect sense. Mm. It does. Yeah. Yeah. But you're beautiful as you are inside and out. And so it's really important to remember that too. And that little part of you is beautiful. And just remember as you talk to her, you say, I'm so sorry that you feel you had to protect yourself because I can see you as a beautiful little girl and there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. Thank you so very much. That makes sense to you, doesn't it? The guide said. Yes. Yeah. Okay, darling. Thank you for that question. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Uh, okay, Lindley. Hi. Hi, Lindley. I yes. thought I'd gotten missed. <laughs> no, no, you were next on this. I'm going down the queues. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so I have been working for many, many years, probably close on 12 years now, with fibromyalgia and rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. And I've done really, really well that I'm off all chemical medication. I oh, manage amazing. myself very well, but I've well had done. something come up in the last six to nine months where I get an inflammation in my coccyx. Yeah. That is just yeah. unbelievable pain. And I can't sit, I can't walk, I can't lie down. And it's it's just crazy. I don't know where I don't know what it's coming from. And so <laughs> the guides are talking to me. So when you think about the journey that you're on mm. uh, in your spiritual journey, do you feel that you're ready to go to the next level? 
Absolutely. So, okay. <laughs> so what is, <laughs> so what is um, actually happening is that, oh God, this is, uh, okay, I will go into this. I wasn't going to go into this kind of stuff, but I will. So what happens is um, we sometimes choose in our life to travel with um, other souls to support us. Now, what that means is we carry them with us. They're not bad. They're not good. It's not like that. They just support us. And when we're ready to go to the next level of our mission and the next level of our life, which I feel you definitely are, then um, we often get back pain, lower back pain or coccyx pain um, or something to do with our, you know, our lower bit. And what it is, is we're ready to support ourselves and we no longer need those other souls. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think, Wendy, should we do this? Should we do this? Because it might be that other people need this. So I'm going to just do this with you. So you just repeat these words. Okay. And if anybody feels the same and they have lower back pain and they feel a similar thing, then this will help you. Okay. So just bear with me. Let me just get these words. One sec. Yeah. Okay. All right. As I stand in my sovereign birthright. As I stand in my sovereign birthright. I choose to release. I choose to release. Any souls I no longer need. Any souls I no longer need. I choose to release them. I choose to release them. As I stand in my own power. As I stand in my own power. I release them with love. I release them with love. And compassion. And compassion. And an honoring of myself. And an honoring of myself. I do this now. I do this now. As I stand fully in my sovereignty. As I stand fully in my sovereignty. Okay, take a deep breath. Let me just have a look. Hold on. You actually have seven. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel? Wow. Just way open. Yeah. Yeah. You had seven. There were like seven that you'd brought in to kind of support you. But you don't need them anymore. So you're completely fully in your power now. I think they've been with me for a long, long, long oh, time. Oh, yeah. And they yes. have been with you a long time. Yeah. Mm. And I'm being shown as well the wrists here. So I don't know if you've had any kind of pain or anything in your wrists, but I'm seeing that kind of changing as well now. How's well, that? It's kind of wrists into fingers that's been sort of the yeah, last how's it, couple of how's weeks. It feeling? How's it feeling now? It's feeling a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Miracles happen, yeah. eh? They do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, darling. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Anybody else um, did that statement and feel a release? Uh, so Bella is next. So definitely, you know, if you're ready to, this is the kind of work that we do in our, our soul family, um, where we go in really deep uh, with many different things, <laughs> uh, whatever I get guided to do. So if you're interested in being part of our soul family, we would love to have you. So Bella, Bella, hi, hi. hi. what's your question? Um, okay. So I as well have like four conditions that have as I say, invaded my body because I don't ever claim my illness as mine. Okay. Um, the one, well, it's kind, of, it's kind of like they're running on par, but out of the two that are sort of like running parallel at the moment that are really annoying, um, that I'm having sort of like major issues with, um, is the PPPD, which is the persistent um, perceptual postural dizziness, which is okay. almost almost like vertigo but much more intense um, how long have you had that 
Uh, I would say, as I said, they sort of, it's, I've got thyroid eye disease with double vision as well. And they kind of like started simultaneously. So mm. it's like literally the 28, about three days ago, it's literally been a year since I was officially diagnosed with the TED. Um, and I think it's about just maybe a couple of months before that really started. It was like the dizziness, which my doctor had thought was BPPV. Um but yeah, it's sort of like, it's kind of like peaked in the past few weeks. Um, sorry, my fan just died. So I've got my manual fan. Oh, um, bring it over here. <laughs> yeah, the battery of my fan died. I, I can't plug it in yet. Um, so yeah, it's just the dizziness. It's really rife at the moment. Um, and I know that all of my conditions are connected because not one, you know, one injury doesn't happen alone. Everything is connected. Mm. Um, in terms of Do, um okay I'm not I'm not going to get into story but mm. um I can see in your field that there was something that happened when you were eight years old and um where you left your body okay and you're not actually quite back in your body so I see oh. you as kind of like, um, don't, don't go into story, but does it make sense to you around about that age? Um, not off the top of my head. Okay. All right. So I can see um, that you're kind of hovering above your body and it's got worse these last couple of weeks because we have gone through a really big injection of light of ascension. So it's like, Hey, you need to be in your body, you need to be in your body, you need to be grounded, you need to be grounded, okay? So my feeling is that those, I can definitely see this, I can see it where you were in bed and you left your body and you didn't come completely straight back in, okay? So there's a little bit still in shock, okay? I have experienced that. I, I, I right. wasn't eight at the time, but I do actually remember I was early teens when I remember that happening. Okay. So maybe you remember it then, but it actually happened earlier when you were oh, younger. Wow. Yeah. And I, I get the sense that um, you would have seen something or there was something in the room. And I mean spirit, not a person. So I mean, spirit in the room, and I feel like that's that's what I'm getting a sense of here for you. So negative or positive spirit? No, 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 not not yeah. not negative or anything. Just that it would have surprised you or shocked you, and I see you kind of coming out of your body and then coming back in. But wow. it's great because what it means is that you've got this opportunity now to say to that part of you. I'm so sorry it was too scary to be fully in your body, okay? I'm so sorry that it didn't feel safe to be on this earth. I'm so sorry that you didn't know what to do in that situation, okay? What are you feeling as I'm saying that? A lot of emotions. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's do something around being in our body because quite a lot of us um, find it really hard to be in our body. So let's just do that together, okay? So um, let's all put our hands on our heart because sometimes we, we've had these experiences, okay? I'm so sorry that it doesn't always feel safe to be here. I'm so sorry that sometimes it's easier not to be in the body. I'm so sorry that this world sometimes feels scary to be here. I'm so sorry that it feels lonely and you miss home. I'm so sorry that you forgot that home is within and we are always with you. Okay, how does that feel? It feels a little better, but it's just so, God, just like the fact that you said that about me leaving my body, as I said, I don't remember it happened when I was eight, but I do remember, and I remember the exact house we were living in, 
how I changed my bedroom when my bed was positioned. Yeah. So what I was feeling when they were doing that little bit there with everybody was the feeling of kind of wanting to go home. And I don't mean that means taking your life or anything, but wanting to go home, wanting to be connected to your soul family, wanting to be connected to your star family. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I hope that helps you, Bella. Susan journey to go on is to see that scene there's a process in my book called time traveling um it's called time traveling and healing hearts and it's where we go into a scene if you know of a particular scene which you don't which you do so you go into that scene and you heal that scene and you bring that part of you back into your heart so that might be a really good thing for you to do all right my love Thank you. Okay. And remember that all of those labels, all of those messages that your body is showing, they're all parts of you, but it's not really true. You know, yeah, there's been a lot of weird sensations happening yeah. right now. Yeah, of course. Right now, but as in just, yeah, you know, over the past few months or so. It just yeah, feels yeah, like yeah, of course. Week, something else comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until we listen, right? Until we hear, until we know, until we remember. This is what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to really listen to my body yeah. and ask it, what is it? And Great. I, I still can't quite get there. You have got there. You ask the question and you have it. Hey. Okay. <laughs> I hope that helps. Uh, wow, interesting evening, right? Um, uh -huh. I think I'm going to do one more. So, um, Deborah Sawyer, question. Hello. Hello, Deborah. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, I have a question, and <clears throat> I've got this tremor, which I've had all my life, and mm. it's getting worse. Okay. And I thought it was related to fear, and I wondered if I could, um, if there was something that I could do to kind of improve it or stop it. Because mm. I think it's gone into my right hand. Mm. And, and so, I to okay. To and so, what what does it get labelled as? Um, they call it benign hereditary tremor because they don't really know what causes it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, what I'm hearing um, is it's about the myelin sheath in the cell. Okay. So what that what that is is. Um, basically the the message being sent to the neurons that is a, a a mixed message or a distorted thank you distorted message okay i'm just yeah. going to call my doctor i think it's my doctor guide here hold on it just always makes me smile hold on yeah okay thank you so what 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 i'm hearing is um I'm hearing the statement here, you're getting on my nerves, right? So obviously you're not getting on my nerves, Deborah. I'm not saying that to you, but there is um, a feeling that you had somebody in your life or many people actually in your life that really did get on your nerves, that really didn't get you, that really didn't understand you and that still don't understand you. Okay, and it's I'm getting father energy here as well. So I'm getting like father. And I'm also hearing that those words were said to you that you're getting on my nerves. This is really clear, actually. Um, and does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. And so that little three year old part of you that heard those words 
uh, it's a bit like spikes in your energy field. And that's showing up in the, this is the science of it, but the myelin sheath, okay, in your cells. And so your, your inner work, Deborah, would be yeah. that little part of you and those words that were said to you, those unkind words that were said to you about you're getting on my nerves, okay? Essentially, it's a bit like the old Victorian days of children should be heard, sorry, seen but not heard. That's what I'm getting a sense of, yeah? And um, it's time for you to be heard. It's time for you to be listened to. And I think your inner work is to heal that little child part of you that was told so many times that just to be quiet, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Mm. And when our body shows something more significant and it gets worse, then we know that the message is getting stronger, that we need to yeah. heal that. Yeah. Mm. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah. And it's just, you know, the physical body is just talking to you and it's shaking yeah. and it's, the communication between the neuron, the neurons and the neural pathways are shaking because they're trying to get the message across. Amazing how our bodies are, right? Yeah, for sure. But it's that little child that is desperate to be heard and desperate to be listened to and desperate to feel important. And she yeah. gets shunned is the word I'm hearing. So shunned away or go away like this, go and play, go and do something. Yeah. 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 Have you got my book? I think you have got my book, Deborah. Have you got my no, book? I haven't actually. You haven't got my book. Okay. No. Um, there's some beautiful healing from the guides in there. So the guides talk about, um, and actually as you read it or as you listen to it, the guides will be, healing you as well and when I wrote it when I channeled it they told me that each word had a healing code in it so as you read it you're actually receiving healing from the guides so that might be something that you feel drawn to do yeah okay mm. yeah thank you for sharing that I'm making a lot of people cry Wendy <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry darling sorry unmute i didn't hear the last bit sorry i muted you what did you say deborah no i've muted you can you unmute it can you can you just click unmute because i can't hear you that's my fault that's all right i just want to say thank you very much it, oh, it you're really welcome. helps me understand mm. what it's about Sometimes all we need is just that facilitator, don't we? Just to say, does this make sense to you? Because sometimes we can't see it ourselves, can we? Yeah. But remember that you you can heal it. Yes. Yeah. All right, my okay. love. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, let me just see. <laughs> Thanks, Wind. Oh, so many, so many, so many. Oh, yeah. T talking about the children's chamber. Yeah, absolutely. My children are in it. My animals are in the animal chamber. And um, whenever I uh, feel uh, drawn to be in a chamber, I just invoke one. Um, and being in the membership, you get all the chambers half price. So if you want to do that, um, you might like to be in that. Okay. So I think... I think I'm going to leave it there. It's half past 10 here. Um, so it's two and a half hours uh, we've been together. I hope you've enjoyed it. I run free uh, workshops pretty much once a month. So if you're interested in coming on the next one, I don't know the subject yet. I'll be told by my guides what they want me to work with. Um, definitely sign up to my YouTube channel. I would love it if you would be part of that community. Um, if you haven't signed up to the newsletter, 
then definitely do that. And there's a free video course. So if you go onto my website, there's just put your email in and there's a free video course. Also on the front of my website, there is a cosmic ordering manifesting uh, process that you might like to get. So if you want a cosmic order with the guides, that might be fun. Tomorrow we have a, a retreat and we run retreats uh, twice a month and we've got a retreat and it is stepping into the portal of relationships. So last week was self-love and this week is all about relationships. So if you fancy that, you can also book that individually. If you're a member, you get that as part of your membership as well, but you can also dip your toe in the water of that work if you'd like to um and i think wendy might put the link there if, if she's got chance to do it for tomorrow's uh retreat and what else yeah if you are interested in the channeling class it opens up in october you can book your place it's a small group uh what else wendy anything else that i'm doing that i can't remember uh I don't think so. I think that's it. <laughs> but I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to work with me privately, the best way to do that is through my membership or through my soul coaching. Have a look at that on my website. And um, I very much look forward to spending time with you again. I hope you found it interesting. I will send out the replay. The replay will be around for a little while. So if you do want to keep this retreat for all the knowledge on it and the healing processes i suggest you download it and keep it on your computer okay much love thank you so much everybody for being here it's been great to, to have all your energy here and um, please keep in touch with us and uh, see you very soon okay thanks for being my assistant wendy and rosh thanks for letting people in thank you thank you thank you i'm going to stop recording now